Welcome, Thunderbird Nation, to the Thunderbird Coaches Show. I'm your host, John Smith. We're here with our football coach, Delane Fitzgerald, and our student athlete this week is Zach Mitchell. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, for sure, man. <coughs> um, look, our T-Birds made the trip up to Lavelle Edwards Stadium, uh, not Les Olsen Stadium, Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And uh, look, we had a clash with the BYU Cougars, um, 41-16. Let's break it down, Coach. Uh, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll start from the beginning, atmosphere, and then uh, work through the game. Players played hard, a lot like we always played. Um, not not consistent enough on in any phase of the game. Not consistent enough on offense, defense, special teams. Uh, John, special teams was our was our extra special undoing on Saturday. Our special teams unit in just about every phase sabotaged what we were doing. We um. Gave up a big kickoff return for the second straight week, and we've got to get that fixed. We gave up a block punt. You give up, you get a punt block, you usually lose. Yeah. Um, and we gave up a punt block on the first one of the game. Um, we, we had an unfortunate uh, – their punter shanked the ball off the side of his foot, and he hit one of our returners in the back of the head while he was blocking. So we gave up a turnover on punt return. So kick kickoff – Punt, punt, return, all made crucial errors in the game. Missed and field goal, missed extra point. We, we missed, missed a field goal. Not a chip shot field goal, but very makeable for that yeah. young man. And, and he doesn't he – doesn't, I'm not as irritated about missing a kick as I am about not getting a college-level kick off of his foot. Um, but we've got a kick better than we did on Saturday, and then we missed an extra point, which is always uncalled for. But we left four points out there that way. Um, and then the the other thing that has to be fixed is our defense has to have a better resolve than we had on Saturday. Anytime something went wrong, our defense immediately gave up seven points. We immediately gave up a touchdown in the ensuing drive, and you can't do that. If you're a defensive player and, and going to be a good college defensive player, you have to have some resolve. you got to have a little stick to about you that when things go wrong, you're going to put your foot down and stop it from going wrong any further. Yeah. Uh, you know, this doesn't – relate fully but it's it, i i relate to the golf game right some guys they'll hit a bogey and and really golf is about what you do next not what you did just barely right i i think that it applies here if you give up a big play you cannot you you gotta the resolve has to kick in and you gotta figure out how to get it right that exact next play you gotta have a short memory and you gotta you gotta go out there and, and figure it out uh, I noticed the 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 D line, however, played uh, at least the run really well. Uh, only gave up what was it, 46 yards on the ground, um, and then the back end, you know, had had a struggle sometimes with their with their uh, with their tight ends and and their receivers. Let's talk a little bit about first quarter. Um, give us the lay of the land. We got a, a crazy atmosphere. I think there was almost 60,000 people in the stands. It was loud. You guys took the air out of the stadium. They went three and out, I think. Or did they get a – they didn't get a first down, did they? They went three and out. You guys stopped them. They punted the ball to us, and we marched all the way down the field uh, for a scoring drive. Talk about the importance of, of starting off right. We'll, we'll flip to a positive here. Uh, in that type of environment, how proud are you uh, of your guys there? You can try to spin it positive if you want to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring it back to the truth. You, you can. They got they got a first down. Yeah. And, and then and they punted on what was the seventh play. So they got a first down. Were okay. unable to get the second one and punted the football to us. We drove the length of the field and and needed seven points. Needed to score a touchdown there and go up seven. John, had we scored, we were going for two. So so we might have went up eight there. But we were going to put that. We were going to put their feet to the fire as soon as we possibly could. Um, drive stalled on about the ten yard line. We kick a field goal go up three to nothing we kick off to them give up the big kickoff return which you can't do after some success after some prosperity you can't do something you can't let down you can't let the air out of the balloon you have to keep playing keep playing hard you must learn from the last play good or bad and then play the next play as hard as you possibly can but we um gave up the big kickoff return and then they turned around a player two later and threw an interception to us that's right uh, we brought pressure Connor Cullimore big got hit. home on the quarterback that's yeah right. he, he licked him pretty good yeah, now big hit and, on the and ball comes flying out like it's not supposed to Quadir Lockett Smith intercepts the ball we've got the ball on their side of the field we go three and out there that was a huge missed opportunity when you turn a team over you got to go score just like the defense has got to not give up a score you've got to go score when you turn them over and they're into the field and we had the ball on a plus 48 plus 49 we needed points off of that drive and we didn't we went three and out there um but but we we were competing john our guys were playing hard we yeah. were competing as long as we'll play hard and compete we'll get better 
Yeah. It, it, we we do have a, a schedule, especially that's front loaded with some juggernauts, right? We go we go Pac twelve, Big twelve. Uh, I mean, at least at money, least money game, money game number sixteen in the country. Yeah, homecoming number twenty two in the country. <laughs> hey, well, how's that? How's that for a September? And then some publication came out said we had the thirtieth hardest schedule in the country. Uh, yeah, we had, may, might have the third hardest third, schedule in yeah, the country. They they added a zero to that. Um, the second quarter really is is where the Cougars' offense really started rolling. Uh, I think they got twenty one zero in that in that second quarter. Um, what what did you see from from the defensive standpoint? They stopped running the ball. We shut that down, and they started chucking it all over the yard. Um, you know, uh, tell me tell me what you saw from the DBs and the and the uh, uh, back half of the defense. The set the front seven looked good, at least stopping the run, but they started going on us. Uh, what did you see there that needs improvement? Yeah, we're, we're good up front, and we've told people that we're good up front for the whole last year. We like our front seven, mm -hmm. and, and they're good players. At BYU's ability to run the uh, inability to run the football on us on a Saturday is a combination between us being good and them not being where they're supposed to be. I worry about them a little bit in the Big 12 with that offensive line. Um, but, but because of that, they started standing there throwing the football. We got outclassed in the secondary, had some guys that weren't ready to play on Saturday the way you need to be ready to play in that atmosphere. Um, we were too soft in coverage, and then once they caught the football, we didn't tackle as well as we needed to tackle. Um, um, John, we're we're sitting here talking. We're zero and two right now. We know there's things to work on, and, and you're right. We've we paid some bills with those first two guarantee games, but still expected to play more consistent. As long as the young men will keep buying in and keep coming back and working hard, we'll continue to get better. Yeah, I like I like that. Uh, it's not really spin. It's just honest truth. Uh, we got the the big time pay games. Let's let's talk a little bit about this guy to your right, uh, Zach Mitchell. There's a reason you brought him on the show. He had a heck of a game, Zach. Congratulations on that. Thank let's you. let's talk a little bit about Zach, his stats in that game, and and what you saw from Zach. It's, Zach's a young man out of Boston, Massachusetts. Sorry to steal your thunder if I do, um, but out of Boston, Massachusetts, he prepped a year at Bridgeton Academy, and where where that's a big deal for him and I is is that was my first coaching job out of college, out of James Madison. I was a defensive coordinator at Bridgeton Academy 2000, 2001, so still have some ties there and some really good friends. Um, but Rick Marcella and Matt Burgess contacted me two years ago and said, we've got a young man here looking for a home, and he's he, he's under under being under-recruited and going to be a good football player. Uh, watched his film a couple of times, fell in love with the way he played football and how hard he played and then my, my next phone call back to Bridgeton was is, is he tough and does he like football and the answer was was no he doesn't like football he loves football and he's really tough so it's been a scholarship on him and it's been a good ride so far I, I worry about him getting a big head now. He said he finally had a good game. Didn't he? he finally, finally had a good game. We bring him on the show. Let's see if he lays an egg for the next month. Oh man. <laughs> Hey Zach, um, before we're gonna we're gonna spot you light you in a minute, but as far as uh, the game went, um, big atmosphere, exciting time. Is that the biggest uh, st uh, stadium or the 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 most people you played in front of? Definitely. Yeah, exciting, uh, nerve wracking. It looks like you settled in uh, and and had yourself. We had nine targets, seven catches for 135 yards, and uh, 43 yards after the catch, which is special. Um, tell me what you saw out there. What was the feeling? You, you had a, a, some time at uh, Arizona State. You come into BYU. What was it like to play the Cougars, and, and how did you feel uh, things went? Uh, I was very comfortable going into BYU. Um, ASU was a, a bigger stadium as well, so mm -hmm. I kind of got my Your nervous feet wet. Knit. Yeah, I got, I got my feet wet during that game, and then I came out with a big smile on my face for BYU. Yeah. I was very comfortable. Cool coming into the first game so the bright lights don't make you uh don't make you squint you got all all the bright lights you got all the uh the the crowd attention and uh you dropped 135 for them we need to get a touchdown on there next next week yeah yeah we need to get that we need that touchdown stat in there <laughs> we got to improve the yak yeah yeah 43 yak could have been 100 if we hey, you got to teach him how to make a first guy miss <laughs> we're getting there we're getting there yeah hey one percent better so, <laughs> so that's going to be seven percent better by the time next weekend there comes we around yeah i love it i love it um any anything else that you guys want to talk about uh the cougars um any other players that you feel like uh deserve some attention on the show We've got a lot of good players, Sean. Yeah. You, you do that, you put me in a spot where I can't, can't answer it correctly. 
Got a lot of good tar- – Targi Lamson's running the football well, and we're happy about that. Isaiah Woodson, Isaiah Woodson, Isaiah Wooden started yeah. to catch his groove a little bit on Saturday, and he's playing better. Um, Connor Collimore and Aubrey Nelms playing hard at that linebacker position, and then those D linemen that played at Rob Horsey and Rylan Suafilio and Joe Tagamoa and are play, played hard on Saturday. Um, we've got to get Julian Sanderlin, and we've got to get Peyton Payne, and we've got to get um, – Josh Lopez, and we've got to get Anisi Purcell to join them and how hard and how well they're playing. Um, but we're good up front and going to get better. I'm, I'm leaving out somebody that played well on Saturday. I mean, Justin played pretty well. He, he had the interception um, there in the – was it the second half? Crucial. Crucial yeah. at the end of the first half, under through that ball. Yeah. But uh, Tim Patrick's got to make a play on that football, got to make a play on the DB when it's underthrown like that. But yeah. uh, let's not sit here and talk about a quarterback's throwing for 50% right now. Justin's capable of being a lot better. Okay. Justin's best football this fall is going to be moving forward, and we expect a lot bigger things out of him. Yeah, as far as the O-line goes, uh, one sack for two games in, in the size of, of uh, the competition we're playing, uh, the pass protection looks okay. Um, tell me what do you think Our about offensive the line plays well in the passive parts of football. The passive uh, The parts. passive, yeah, the, the passive. If we're doing something that's passive, they're, they're okay, which is pass protect or maybe running outside zone. Where we've got to get it turned up with our offensive line and our running backs is we've got to be able to line up and run the football downhill at people, and we can't do that right now because we don't get a lot of vertical push. Um, re- really nice young men off the field, and we got to find a way to get them to play harder and, and not be so nice on the field. Go find the dog. Go find the dog in and bring it out. <clears throat> um, Coach, anything else about BYU? We can put that one to bed. Yeah, let's put it to bed five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> BYU is now behind us. Uh, before we move on to our next opponent, UC Davis, I uh, just want to give a shout-out to one of our sponsors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. Uh, the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. Look, NFL season is upon us. Um, go go over and watch some games. Go enjoy some great food, some craft cocktails over there at the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. Remember, guys, that's 21 plus. Uh, we always need to drink responsibly if we're going to go over there, have some adult beverages, be responsible about it. Uh, but g- great atmosphere, uh, great opportunity to watch some, some NFL coming up. And a nice place to hang out if you need. Warehouse, bar, plus kitchen. Proud sponsors of the uh, Thunderbird Coaches Show. Uh, so, Coach, we've now put BYU in the rearview mirror. Uh, we got UC Davis, uh, the Aggies, coming up uh, this weekend. Uh, let's, let's preview the Aggies, uh, see what they're about, and see what you see on tape. And let's, uh, let's move forward uh, to an opponent, at least that's in the FCS, <coughs> not the Big 12, not the uh, Pac-12. Uh, but but the Aggies are a, a really good football team. Let's let's talk about the preview here. Yeah, pro- probably the most well coached team that we've seen in a while. Smart guys, uh, Dan. <laughs> smart guys. Yeah, they, somebody said it's an academic school, and you can kind of see that through their players. But Dan Hawkins, who's an alum there, and the, the coaching aficionados out there. It's also the home of Chris Peterson. They've had a couple coaching legends come through there as players. But um, Dan Hawkins played there, uh, had a lot of success as Boise State's coach, had some success as Colorado's coach, and then after getting let go at Colorado, goes back to UC Davis as their head coach, but does a nice job. Um, really good coaching staff and they're well coached um that their players that you, you brought it up I, I i believe that it's an academic school because that they play smart don't make mistakes don't do things that hurt themselves um, one of the bigger stronger teams that we're going to face this year and then they have some playmakers and, and we can get into specifics but they're their quarterback's a player, and he hadn't played great yet this year, just like our quarterback hadn't. Um, so expect him to come out of it on Saturday and play really, really well. But Miles Hastings, his name, and does a nice job. Um, that they've got a tough tailback that does some good things for them. He, you know, he's one of the rodeo from one of the rodeo families in Idaho. And oh, is that right? He's got some relatives that are rodeo champions, and you can see it the way he plays because he's tough and blue collar, but really like him. Number three, and it's I'm gonna get it wrong, but it's Land. Uh, I'm, I'm get I'm getting. Well, I know last it starts with wrong. an L. Yeah, they yeah. do a lot of like yeah, uh, pistols, direct direct snap goal line. They get stuff into with the him. they get into the wildcat, yeah. snap it to him. Wildcat. But he plays tailback, plays in the wildcat. He sli- he splits out and 
plays receiver for him. But he's their best football player is number three, does a nice job for him. Um, offensive line is big and strong, and they do a nice job there. They returned six out of their top, top ten receivers last year. They returned their top receiver and C.J. Hutton, and he's a good player. Flip over on the defensive side and really big and really strong up front. Their linebackers are active and run and make plays. And then they have two DBs that, that are special, and, and the one's out of Pleasant Grove, Utah. But uh, I'm going to get it wrong. It might be number four. But no, number four is playing for them, and he's preseason All-American, preseason defensive player of the year in the big sky, but a good football player and plays downhill, makes a lot of tackles at the safety position. And then number three for them at the cornerback position is a good player. Good cover corner, and he does everything their defensive coordinator is asking them to do um john sound uh their, their, their university has money they have put money into a brand new facility up there that's extremely nice football facility and it's helped them in recruiting they've recruited big strong smart players and that's the way they play and they execute whatever the offense defensive coordinators and the head coach ask them to execute that's what I was going to mention. I, I watched their game against uh, Texas A&M Commerce, and they seemed to me like uh, they weren't out of position. seemed to me like they executed very well. Uh, they went up against Oregon State last week. Uh, Oregon State's a really good, I mean, top 20 team in the nation in the FBS. Uh, so we maybe didn't really see their, their uh, potential, their best football there. Uh, but, but, again, uh, really, really good execution, really smart. Uh, really, really tough physical team. Reminds me of the teams we had back in 2013, 14, maybe even to 15, where uh, just big, strong. Uh, we didn't necessarily wow anybody with our speed or anything like that, but uh, a lot of execution. So um, going up there, uh, not not to give any they're, John. They're hard to watch on film, and I, and I have no idea what why SU, is that what SUU looked like ten years ago. But Cal Davis is hard to watch on film because they're so much better than Texas A and M Commerce. You can talk about a tale, a tale of two different schools two games, now. Yeah. Hey, Davis, California is a real nice town, real nice city with a nice campus, and Commerce is not. And, and the kids look completely different and play completely different. But they're so much better than Commerce that it really jumps off the screen at you. And then you flip forward to last week, and o Oregon State's the real deal now. Yeah. Um, if in in a different conference, Oregon State's a top ten, top five program um but the pack is loaded this year their coach has a, the number one name in the country <laughs> jonathan smith jonathan shout smith. out jonathan smith across the country but sorry to sorry to, to ruin your flow there but but go on as far as as far as the discrepancy yeah. on the film from commerce and yeah, flow, flow. you like using these words with me that do not apply flow <laughs> have you seen my hair hey, I, I haven't had flow in about 25 years no now. but zach's got proper yeah. flow that's yeah. nice zach yeah. zach doesn't want me to sit here and tell him his hair looks just like rylan's did last no week. no not a him and rilo got same haircut rilo rilo rilo's chance. nice but that's next level that's nice stuff over there coach <laughs> I want to. I'm, I'm gonna leave him alone. All right, I'm gonna leave him alone. But on it, they're so much better than Commerce. The film's hard to watch, and then you okay. flip over, and Oregon State is so much better than yeah. them that the film is hard to watch. We won't get a gauge on, on how we, we know they're top twenty in the country, and some polls fourteen, some polls seventeen. But you average it out, they're fifteen, sixteen in most of the polls right now. We know they're a top twenty football program. We don't know exactly how good they are, and we won't know until seven p.m. on Saturday night. Got it. Yeah, I mean, that that makes perfect sense. It's going to be tough to gauge who they are. Uh, we'll, f we'll find out Saturday night. There you go. Yeah. Um, going forward into this UC Davis, uh, UC Davis matchup, um, what, what's the message to the team after two tough losses, uh, a bigger, better – I wouldn't even say better, but, but bigger programs, um, the haves and the have-nots, so to speak, on the financial side uh, – you know, how do you keep your guys from hanging their heads uh, after the two losses going into what what I would consider uh, at least uh, maybe maybe on more equal footing, uh, not not perfectly equal, but but a lot more equal footing going into this game. We don't recruit players here that are going to hang their heads. Good. We don't recruit players going to hang their heads, and we don't ever recruit players or parents that are, that are going to point fingers because our coaching staff's not going to do that, and our players aren't going to do that. Um, but we're we're not. We're we're fine. 
Good. We, we are absolutely fine. Uh, John, I said this to a lot of people preseason. I'm, I'm going to say it right now to, for everybody to hear in public. Our conference is a war daddy in September with everybody trying to make money to pay the bills. Right. Eastern Kentucky had two two bad ones. A, a lot of losses. Austin by, by, uh, A lot of losses. <clears throat> Austin P went to Tennessee. Uh, anyway, a lot of money games being played in September. If a football program in the United Athletic Conference is 2-3, two, 2-3, two three, two three, mm-hmm. or 3-2 and two at the end of September – you're in a driver's seat for the conference title on a playoff bid, which is where we're trying to get to. We're, we're trying to win the UAC conference title. We're trying to get to the national playoffs. Our goal coming into the season wasn't to beat BYU. It, it was to be to have a completely successful season, not just one one Saturday. That's right. We we're, got 11 opportunities, yeah, right? Not, not trying to be a shot in the pants now. We're not trying to be a fly-by-night. Hey, they're, they're good. They're good one week, and then they're bad for three weeks, and then their kids find it again. No, we don't want to be a football program of peaks and valleys. We're trying to play good football every single Saturday. On that note, in answering your question, what we want to do is is let, let's get two or three wins this month. We're going to be fine in October and November if we can do that. Great. Great message also, right? Like you're recruiting guys that, that uh, know the drill. They know they got to keep their heads up. They got to fight. They got to find that dog. Uh, they need to get 1% every better, uh, better every week, every day, sorry. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a great, um, it's a great message for a team, great message for life, Coach. Thank you. Um, Anything else you want to talk about UC Davis? I mean, uh, we're, we're going to go see what's what uh, Saturday night. and uh, nice, t- uh, nice town, nice facilities, nice campus. They have a beautiful stadium for, for the size of program. Smart, smart kids. Go play some smart go, kids. Go, ki- go play some smart kids. <laughs> you almost had it. Almost, uh, from almost. Boston? Well, we'll go over that. <laughs> just say, hey, that's a great segue. Uh, if, I, if I would have said wicked, wicked. Wicked, play, wicked yeah. smart. Go play some wicked smart. Wicked smart. smart. <laughs> um, the Visit Cedar City and Brian Head uh, presents our student athlete spotlight, um, Zach Mitchell. Zach, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Um, we we kind of coach kind of alluded. You're from Boston. Uh, tell us a little bit about your hometown, your hometown area, and then talk to us about uh, how you made your way to Cedar City. So I'm from South Boston, Mass. Um, it's like five ten minutes from the sure. inner city. Okay. Um, I found my way here by um, going to Bristol. I did a prep year after graduating from Catholic Memorial High School. Okay. Um, I met Rick Marcella, uh, the head coach for Bristol Academy. Um, I had a pretty good season that year. Um, And then recruiting started to stalemate again during COVID. Yeah, Um, oh, right. So he made a few calls, um, and then Coach Fitz gave me a call. Coach Fix picked up the other line and said, "Yep, Coach <laughs> Fitz to the rescue. We like him, <laughs> Captain Saber. We want him. <laughs> <laughs> cool. How is it exciting? I mean, uh, you got a you got a D one offer. Come in, play FCS football at a at a high level. Um, tell us tell us why you chose Cedar City. Was it your only uh, was it your only offer? Some people uh, choose you know Fitz from desperation. <laughs> Some people choose Fitz because he's the man. Tell us, tell us your thoughts. After, He's sitting right here, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> after after COVID, I ended up having this as my only offer. Okay. Um, still with this opportunity, I probably would have chose this over the offers I had. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> uh, Miles Killerbrew, he we were his only offer, and he's the uh, special teams captain for the Steelers. Yep. So you've got a you've got great Braxton, opportunity. Braxton Jones the only offer. Is that true? And he's starting for the Chicago and he's start, Bears. Yeah, yeah. We've we've got an opportunity uh, to develop great players and great talent, and uh, so we're we're really glad you're here. So you you arrive on campus, you arrive in Cedar City, and you look around. Uh, there's it's going to be different from yep. South Boston. So what what were the first things that caught your eye about need, need uh, coming answer, into Utah? Uh, you want me to answer a question? I, I, I'm going to switch questions here. Hey, Zach, from eighth grade through your prep school year, how many females did you attend school with? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, zero. <laughs> zero. Zero. Zach, Zach went to an all-male Catholic, Catholic school and then all-male prep school. There you go. That's 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 something we don't get a whole lot around here. But but back to my question: coming to Cedar City, you uh, you get on campus, um, environment's different. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, coming to Cedar City and what were your initial thoughts? It was a little bit of a shock for me. Yeah, um, I have family in uh, Salt Lake, so I thought Utah was Salt all, Lake. Yeah, yeah. 
so when I came down here, um, it was a really big shock for me. There was sure. like, I seen maybe 500 people here in the whole town when I first got here. <laughs> uh, my parents was like, where are we dropping this kid off at? Yeah. So for me, it was a little bit um, different. In the back of your mind, did you say, oh man, what did I do? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I think your laugh tells the truth. We just got all we have to do is send mom the crime rate report, the difference. Uh, that's in, true. Hey, the difference in here and Southie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you you safe here? You're good. <laughs> You're good here. Um, tell us what you're studying. What do you, you? We got student athlete. We know the athlete part. You're great on the field. Very smooth, by the way. Great route runner. Great hands. Um, tell us about the student part. What are you studying, and what are you excited about uh, your your academic career here? So I'm studying uh, kinesiology. Okay. Um, I want to be a, a PT. Excellent. So, um, yeah, I'm really interested in my science. Okay. Um, shout out a professor who you like so far. You've been here on campus two years now? Yep. Okay. Uh, I like my new professor, Professor Funk. Professor Funk. Shout yeah. out Professor Funk. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, <clears throat> he named the only professor. He remembers their name. I just had him today. <laughs> the most recent class, recent professor. I knew it was coming. He's smart. It rolled right off the right off, right the, off tongue. the tongue. No problems. Yeah, um, Zach. What do we need to know about you, man? What are some things that uh, maybe even your teammates don't know? What's some? What's uh, let's let's go a little deeper with Zach Mitchell. What are you about? I'm I'm You're, really laid back. I'm really mellow. Um, normally on the field, you see the real me. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I'm good. You just smooth. Yeah. What What are some things you like? You like music. You like uh, uh, the video games. You just study and play football. I mean, what do you What do you like to do on your off time? Uh, video games. Yeah. Um, normally, yeah. Um, I like. I also like playing basketball. So. Okay. Yeah. Normally during the off season, I'll be in there every other day. Yeah. Well, save the ankles. <laughs> <laughs> save the knees. <laughs> um, who's the best video game player on your on your team? Oh, me. It's not really wow. a question. That was a super wow. fast hey, answer. You were talking about smooth. Yeah. yeah. What okay. game What game you play? UFC, Madden, 2K. Okay. It don't matter. It don't matter. It's all Zach Mitchell all <laughs> okay. day long. All right. This this might be an ongoing segment. Um, what's your favorite thing to do in Cedar City <clears throat> off campus? I mean, you, you go out, you eat, you go hang out. What's, what's something – like if you were explaining to people back home about Cedar City, what would you say is, is, is a cool part? Um, not really sure. Um, we normally are going to other people's houses or chilling and playing the video games there. But places to go to eat like Chili's. Uh, you just just like we spend a lot out. of time each other with each other. But you need uh, to get outdoors more, man. Yeah, You're, I haven't this really. Is, this is the mecca for you. Got to go take a hike, <laughs> smell some fresh air, man. You don't have mountains like this in in Boston. We do not. No, so get up, get up in there when you get a little free time. <laughs> Put the controller down for just a minute or two. <laughs> go see the rest of the world, how it all works. Enjoy some nature. <laughs> so, uh, anything else? You got any shout outs for anybody at home? Uh, shout out mom, dad. Hey, he's been listening to the <laughs> show. Shout out mom and dad. Anybody else? No, we're good with that. All right, cool. I was coming through the tunnel at Arizona State, and there's mom and dad. I had to, I had to stop what I was doing, get a hug. That's cool. <laughs> so yeah, very cool. All right. Well, that's been our segment. <clears throat> Excuse me. With Zach Mitchell, uh, visit Cedar City at Brian Head. That's visitcedarcity.com. Um, coach, what are some parting words? What What did you see on tape? What are some things that uh, you're excited about? I know we need to fix a lot of things, and we need to come together and uh, and and work as a team. But what are some things we'll leave on a positive note? What are some things that you saw that you really thought? Uh, that that are that you want to highlight john the whole thing's positive uh, you can't just because somebody's being honest with you you can't call it negative no I'm, the whole sec the whole segment is positive yeah and hey, what are we excited about we're playing hey playing the biggest game in school's history this saturday night in davis davis california and why, why is it the biggest it's the next one it's the, next it's the game. most important game in school history because it's the next game. We're going to be excited to play football on Saturday night, and so are they. Yeah. Um, they're, they're playing their home opener. We haven't gotten to our home opener yet, but um, excited to play football. And really, John, you were talking about positives. Now, we had 50 freshmen and sophomores played on Saturday. Two, two days ago, we had 50 freshmen and sophomores. We travel. We travel with 70 guys in our travel party, and 50 of them are freshmen and sophomores. Wow. This guy and all of his class, yeah. we are going to be extremely good going forward, and we're excited about that, players and coaches. 
Zach, last words. You got anything for your teammates or anybody at home? Uh, no. Thank, thanks for having me. Yeah, no. It's great, great to have you here. The Thunderbird Athletic Foundation is the fundraising arm of the SEU Athletic Department. The primary goal of the TAF is to enhance the lives of student athletes, providing them resources to be elite in competition, the classroom, and the community. Click the Donate tab at suutbirds.com to learn more about how to support SUU athletics. If you would like to donate sp specifically to the football program, you can scan the QR code on the screen. Thank you for all our TAF and Touchdown Club supporters for your continued and ongoing support. Uh, Coach, thank you so much, Zach. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap and, and uh, sign off. I'm John Smith for Delane Fitzgerald and Zach Mitchell. Go T-Birds. Go Thunderbirds.